Okay, uh, let's get started. Uh, very happy to have uh, Dr. Hideyuki Hata today for uh, uh, today's colloquium. And uh, uh, Hideyuki uh, got his PhD, uh, I mean, bachelor degree from the University of Tokyo in 2009. Uh, and it's uh, actually a newly minted uh, PhD from that same university, uh, the recent uh, March. And uh, he's currently a scientific visitor at HAO, working with uh, Matthias uh, Rampo, and supported by JSPS, the Japanese Society for Promotion of Science. Uh, he studies a solar global convection, a mean field, and dynamo using high performance, uh, high performance computing. And today he's going to discuss his uh, recent research work. Thank you. So today I talk about uh, small scale dynamo in the solar convection zone. So I don't use any special setting, and, uh, but uh, the special thing in my study is uh, just a high resolution. And uh, so I also discuss a recently raised program by the observation of the uh, computational studies. Okay, at first I start with the very basis of the solar convection. So when you see the solar surface in the visible light, you can see the very turbulent convection like this. So in the center of the, in the core of the, uh, so the sun, the nuclear fusion generates energy, and it is transported by the radiation in the radiation radiative zone. It is 70% uh, of the solar interior. And the final 30% the convection transport energy from the base of the convection zone to the surface as the entropy flux. So let's uh, review the, um, the convective flux. In the solar convection zone, this, uh, so in the solar interior, this, this uh, equation are satisfied. I mean, so this is a solar luminosity. The solar luminosity transported by the radiation and the uh, uh, convective flux. So in the convection zone, the convective flux is dominant. And the convective flux can be expressed like this. So density times heat capacity at constant pressure times radial velocity. Radial means from center to the surface times the uh, temperature difference. Temperature difference means the temperature difference from the parcel to the surrounding material. So in the upflow, the temperature is high. It means hotter. And the downflow is cooler. So it means the energy is transported upward from the base of the convection zone to the surface. So in the mixing ring theory, so this is a, a, some simple theory. So uh, estimates the convective velocity with this idea. So when we define some mixing rings, this is a, a some factor. This is a something unity and a, a, the order of one unity and the pressure scale height. This is a mixing rings. Mixing rings means some mean free pass of the convective parcel. So when the convic uh, convective parcel go to the mixing ranks and uh, it disappears, so something like that. So then the uh, temperature difference can be estimated with this. So this is a uh, uh, temperature gradient in the parcel. So this can be estimated with the adiabatic temperature gradient. So I, I mean the, the convective parcel is uh, varied with the adiabatically. So this is a uh, uh, temperature gradient in, in the surrounding material. This is a super adiabatic uh, temperature gradient. So, so and uh, when we multiply the uh, delta R, so this is a mixing length, we can estimate the delta T. So then, so convective velocity can be estimated like this. So with the equation motion, with the only consider the uh, gravity, we can estimate the uh, convective velocity like this. So this is very simple uh, model, but uh, this is not so bad. I mean, the, when we calculate the 3D convective model, this is a Mark Mesh model in 2008. So the convective velocity itself is not so bad. So, so I mean, so, so in this model, the convective, so very turbulent convex structure can be reproduced. But uh, so in this talk, I want to um, discuss uh, pro two problems in this type of calculation. So one problem is uh, uh, raised by the comparison with the helio seismology. So this is a, a comparison with, with the helio seismology and the uh, Ashcode calculation. So horizontal axis denotes the L. So I mean, this has a, a this, this is a spectra of the convective velocity. So this has a, a larger scale and this is a smaller scale. 
So this is a uh, spectra from the Ashkar equation, and this is a spectra estimated from the local heteroseismology. So you can see, so this is a log log uh, log log plot. So you can see the so more than one order of magnitude difference between ash and heteroseismology. This is a not a only a problem for the ash. So I also do carry out some global convection calculation. I see. Uh, almost a similar uh, spectra as the uh, ash. So I mean, the, all of the convective calculation in the global setting has uh, this problem. Okay. So the other problem is accelerated pole. So as you know, the the sun is rotating, and the solar equator is more rapidly rotating than the polar region. So this is maintained. This is supposed to maintained by the banana cell. This this structure. So Coriolis force is proportional to the V cross omega. This is the analogy to the cyclotron motion of the uh, plasma particle. The uh, Lorentz force is V cross B. So and the uh, plasma particle is rotating around the magnetic field. So the Coriolis force is V cross omega. So uh, so convective parcel is rotating around the uh, rotational axis. Then it generates a banana cell-like structure. So when we have this type of structure, so this V phi and the v, v phi is um, dominant. Then, so this is in no sound hemisphere. This is bent by the Coriolis force and generates this type of flow structure. So then, the, this positive positive uh, V phi generates a, a positive V theta, and the negative V phi uh, generates a negative V theta. It means uh, a positive correlation between V theta and V phi. It means an uh, equator or transport of the angular momentum. And this maintains the uh, uh, equator word acceleration. But it is uh, satisfied only when the uh, coil force is strong. So this is a nice study by Gustin in 2013. So th they show that the, there is a, this, there is a um, loss B number dependence on the structure of the differential rotation. So in this region, this shows a fast rotation and slow convection. Okay? So this region is a slow rotation, the fast uh, convection. So loss B number is high. So so the, so when the rotation is fast, the uh, differential rotation has the same structure, similar structure has, uh, to the uh, solar convection. I mean the equator region is uh, accelerated. But uh, when the uh, convection is fast, I mean the rotation is slow. The the uh, the Differential structure has a anti-anti-solar uh, differential rotation. I mean, the polar region is accelerated. So we believe that the, the sun is in this region. But uh, recently, we can increase the resolution, and uh, we and we deduce the uh, diffusivity on the velocity and the diffusivity on the entropy or something, and then the uh, the it increases the uh, uh, convection velocity and the uh, Gradually, the regime go to this. So I mean, the, when we use a very high resolution calculation with solar setting, I mean the solar rotation rate and the solar luminosity, we have this regime. This is not uh, uh, consistent with uh, uh, solar observation. So it, it means uh, so I I so these two studies suggest that the. Uh, that the, the, the convection velocity reproduced in the high resolution calculation is too high. So in this study, we expect the magnetic field has to, a role to suppress the convection velocity. So there is an uh, indication by photospheric ca uh, calculation. So this is shown in one month ago colloquium by Matthias. So Matthias shows the very high resolution calculation of photospheric uh, convection, MGD convection. So when he increased the resolution, the effectivity of the a small scale dynamo is increased like this. So then, so this is a spectrum. Of, so, so blue line is uh, a kinetic energy, and the red line is the magnetic energy. So this is the initial. Phase. So I mean, dashed line is the initial phase, and the, in the uh, saturated phase, the convection is affected like this. So in the small scale, uh, convection is suppressed by factor of two. So I mean, the when when we we can increase the uh, convex global convection calculation, so we can um, 
improve the efficiency of the small scale dynamo, and then it can suppress the convection velocity. This is our expectation. But the one problem is uh, so global MHD calculation requires rather low resolution. So I mean the, the global sun is very large. So this is a uh, 4,000 megameter. But the pressure scale height, uh, uh, even as the base of the convection zone, is a 60 megameter. So the typical uh, grid, uh, grid size of the, uh, this type of so uh, uh, Cairo and the UFONS calculation is something uh, 6 megameter. So it is not enough to resolve the inertial range. So I mean, so we need to uh, well resolve the uh, input scale of the turbulence. So this is not enough. So, so only the 10 to the 20 percent of the equipation magnetic field is maintained in this type of study. So, 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 yeah. Anyway, so, so our purpose of this study is increase the resolution and the see the uh, improvement of the small scale dynamo. But the uh, one um, concern of the uh, strong magnetic fields, uh, it should be reproduced in the high uh, uh, high resolution calculation is uh, energy flux. This is a UFONS calculation. So this is a convective flux. So I explained previously, and uh, there are a lot of uh, energy flux, but uh, yeah, I want to say that uh, this is a hydrodynamic calculation, in global hydrodynamic calculation. So this is a MHD calculation. And uh, in UFONS calculation, uh, RMS velocity is reduced 20% with including a magnetic field. <coughs> but uh, ent entropy flux, this is a convective flux, entropy flux is reduced 40%. So I mean that uh, when the RMS velocity is reduced, the entropy convective flux is more reduced. So, so when the when we have the very strong magnetic field with a efficient small scale dynamo, so can we transpose the solar luminosity with the uh, entropy as the entropy flux is a one question. So this is a, a one point. So, so this is a, another requirement for the photospheric simulation with, from the Matthias calculation. So, the, as I explained, so Matthias increased the resolution. And uh, but uh, just increase the resolution is not enough to reproduce the uh, photospheric magnetic field. So this shows uh, uh, this is a kind of busy uh, figure. But uh, so please see these two lines. These two lines, the difference of t these two lines are just uh, uh, different bottom boundary condition. So this uh, this is a uh, here is a surface, and uh, this is a depth, and this is a magnetic field. So yeah, magnetic field. RMS magnetic field. So when we have a symmetric magnetic field at the bottom, it's, it means that the, the convection zone is filled with a very efficient uh, small scale dynamo. So we can reproduce a 60 Gauss uh, mean magnetic field as a tau equal one level. This is consistent with the solar observation like this. But uh, when we, uh, so when he assumes that zero, uh, magnetic field at the bottom, it means that the solar, uh, rest of the solar convection zone is free from the magnetic field. He, he can only reproduce 30 Gauss at the tau equal one level. So we need to assume efficient small scale dynamo deep in the convection zone. So, I'm, so I know that uh, th so there has a small depth and the resolution dependence in explored range. O of course, uh, when he increased the resolution, the uh, Saturated level is high, but uh, yeah, it's very small. Anyway, so our strategy is uh, in order to investigate the role of the small scale dynamo in the solar convection zone, uh, we give up covering the whole domain of the co convection zone on the long time uh, scale. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll show the in the uh, later slides was uh, my comparison with uh, my calculation of Matthias one. <coughs> okay, so yeah. So yeah, anyway, so my calculation domain is uh, from the base of the convection zone to the 96% uh, of the solar interior. But uh, so I restrict the horizontal extent of the my calculation box. So then the, uh, we uh, increase the resolution to the uh, delta x is 30, uh, 350 kilometer. This is a uh, uh, almost 20 times uh, smaller uh, grid size. And we also adapt the new efficient numerical method. It is called the uh, reduced speed of sound technique. So in order to explain the 
our new methods. So I want to explain the difficulty in the solar convection zone. <coughs> the most important difficulty in the solar convection zones are uh, uh, speed of sound. So this, this plot shows the convective velocity and the speed of sound. The horizontal axis denotes the radius. Here is the base of the convection zone, and here is the surface. So red line is the convective velocity estimated from the mixing length theory, and uh, this is the speed of sound. So this is a log plot. So you can see that the, the speed of sound is much faster than convective velocity. So this limits the time spacing in the numerical calculation. So with the uh, express methods, so CFL condition is expressed like that, like that. So we need to have the very small time step due to the very high speed of sound wave. So in this type of calculation, we only we are only interested in the uh, convection uh, re uh, phenomena related to the convection, but the time step is re restricted by the uh, sound wave. So in order to overcome that, so uh, we use the uh, uh, reduced speed of sound technique. So usually, so this type, this method, analytic approximation is used. So ash codes use the uh, analytic approximation. So in this method, the uh, speed of sound is assumed to be infinite. But uh, in my method, the effective speed of sound is reduced. And so the uh, advantage of our uh, method is uh, no elliptic equation and uh, no need for the global communication in parallel computing. And uh, we can use the uh, uh, ordinary method for the MHD calculation. So, and, uh, so we, uh, I um, implement uh, this method for the usual MHD calculation. So it's scaled to the 10 to the 5 core. This is uh, our, this, uh, currently available numerical resource in our uh, situation. But uh, I expect this scales more in the weak scaling. And the performance is also good, so 15%, around 15% in the K-computer, even with the 10 to the 5 cores. What is the uh, row 1 and row 0? Ah, okay. The row, row 0 is the background density. And the row 1... Uh, horizontally average. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. The so row 1 is a perturbation. Okay, so this is a non-time dependent. But uh, yeah, so recently we found that uh, it should be low, low. So low zero plus low one. Low, yeah, 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 something like that. Yeah, so validity of this method is checked in the previous study, so in this paper. Please see this if you are in, in, interested in. So using this method, so we increase resolution. And uh, so the other advantage of this uh, method is uh, we can be uh, near surface layer with uh, uh, global, com global setting. And this is a Mark Mays 2008 paper's calculation and uh, at the point 0.98, this is around the top boundary. So we increase the resolution and uh, increase, uh, so increase the uh, top boundary. So this is a, a convective structure as a 0.99. So, so for this calculation, so this is a, a study from, result from my PhD thesis. So I can reproduce uh, something 10 megameter scale convection with this calculation, and uh, we, I can reproduce uh, some indication of the near surface area. Anyway, so this movie, I want to show the efficiency of our uh, recently developed methods. <coughs> so in the small scale dynamo study, so we restrict the uh, calculation domain, and uh, in the Cartesian geometry, so we want to avoid the any side effect from the boundary. So I want to use a periodic boundary for the uh, small scale dynamo study. So in order to do this, I adapt Cartesian geometry for this study. So, so blue color uh, means a negative point of the, my study. So, so solar standard model is adapted from the background stratification. So I mean the row zero and the P zero and T zero. No rotation. and uh, so. I also use a new artificial viscosity suggested by Lemper 2014. And uh, so solar flux is adapt adapted from the base of the convection zone. So I mean that this, this value is, is uh, for only for the base of the convection zone. But uh, of course, the sun has a, a square R factor, so it is expanding. So, so in the upper region, it is not correct. Any, anyway, so, so I calculate this equation. So I use the uh, <coughs> equation of states, including the uh, ionization effect. But uh, in the middle of the convection zone, the uh, hydrogen and the helium is uh, comp almost completely 
ionized. So this is almost same. In, in my calculation, in my current calculation, this is almost same as the uh, equation of state for the perfect gas. OK, this is a setting. So calculation domain is from the base of the convection zone to the 69% of the solar radius. So we can reach the something 99% uh, of the solar radius, but uh, we want to study the small scale dynamo, and uh, we need to resolve the inertia scale of the turbulence. So in, the, in this region, so the input scale of the turbulence is not so small. So in, when we restrict the region around here, we can resolve the uh, inertia scale of the turbulence uh, well. And the horizontal extent is the uh, solar radius. Yeah, something. Uh, so solar radius, solar radius, and 25% uh, uh, of the, uh, the solar radius. And uh, we carry out uh, three calculations with different resolution. So one is uh, this, and this, and this. And uh, the highest resolution, the grid spacing, is smaller than 350 kilometer. So this H means a hydrodynamic case. So we mm, calculate the hydrodynamic case for 100 days. And then we random magnetic field is added with no net fr magnetic flux. And then the case is becoming the M. OK? <coughs> so this is a, a result. So, so this is a, a evolution of the magnetic energy. Horizontal axis denotes the day, time. And uh, vertical axis denotes the uh, E mag, so magnetic energy. So, the, so I, as, a, as Matthias suggested in the, his small scale dynamo study in the photosphere, so it is same as in my convection calculation. The growth rate in the linear phase depends on the resolution. So in this calculation, so the, so the growth rate is three days in this resolution and there are one days for this resolution. And uh, it is important to mention that uh, the saturation, saturated strength of the magnetic field is much larger, larger than the previous global dynamo simulation. In the previous global dynamo simulation, the saturated magnetic den energy density is something 3.5 times 10 to the 5. But in my current calculation, in the highest one is a 2 times 10 to the 6. So it is so one order mag almost one order magnitude larger than the previous one. And uh, this is a, a calculated result. So the velocity, uh, vertical velocity is a 0.95, close to the upper boundary. So this is a hydrodynamic one, and this is a magnetic one. You can see that uh, in the magnetic ground, the, we have very smooth structure compared with the uh, hydrodynamic one. So this region is zoomed. So yeah, you can see very smooth structure compared with the uh, so, uh, hydrodynamic one. Okay. So this is a, a magnetic field. So yeah, so magnetic field around the 0.95 solar radius. That we can see so sheet-like structure in the downflow, and uh, this is a movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can see that. Anyway, so I want to show that. Uh, uh, so in this layer, so the uh, so uh, in the downflow, we can see strong magnetic field, and this is a vertical cut. So this of the mo momentum in the uh, hydrodynamic one and the MHD one, and uh, this is a alpha band velocity, vertical alpha band velocity, and uh, this is a movie as the 0.8 solar radius. So I even in the middle of the convection zone. So in the upflow, also have the small scale structure in the uh, hydrodynamic run. But uh, when we increase the magnetic field, this is smooth like this. And uh, you can see that the, the horizontal motion is suppressed by the magnetic field in this, in, in, the, uh, in this movie. OK, so then I see the spectra of this calculation. So this black line shows a kinematic energy, a kinetic energy in MHD case. Okay, so red is a kinetic energy in hydrodynamic case, and the br uh, blue line is a magnetic energy in MHD. Uh, of course, in MHD calculation, so horizontal axis is a K. So this is large and small. So in the upper layer, the uh, smaller scale is suppressed. This is the same as the Matthias calculation. So and the uh, magnetic energy exceeds the uh, uh, kinetic energy in the smaller scale. And uh, but uh, when we go to deeper layer, this 
So all the scale is suppressed. And we have the very strong magnetic fields. And uh, this, this is around the base of the convection zone. And the, uh, the velocity is more suppressed. So this is caused by the downward pointing flux. So, so the, this is the definition of pointing flux, so radial pointing flux. This shows the uh, uh, distribution of pointing flux. In the convection zone, the pointing flux is negative. It means that the uh, uh, magnetic energy is transported downward because the uh, downflow has uh, more energy compared with the upflow, so it transports the energy downward. So it means that uh, so so larger scale, the small scale dynamo for the larger, larger scale, it has a longer time scale. So the pointing flux is very fast in, in this region. So in this region, the energy is transported downward, but uh, in this region, energy is accumulated from the top. So it means that it makes small scale dynamo difficult in the upper layer, in this layer, and but uh, it, it makes small scale dynamo easier in the uh, down a part of the solar convection zone. So this, okay. Yeah. Uh, no, not, no, not, not at all. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so anyways, Shaban only shows our, our spectral as a 0.92. So this is a spectral at 9, 7, 2, and 8. Yeah, okay. No, no, not, not, not at all. Yeah. Anyway, not at all. So they, uh, they require the two, over the two order of magnitude in velocity. So it is not enough. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a straight wall there at the bottom? No, so just a wall. Just a wall? Yeah. Okay. What about at the top? At the top is also a wall. Okay. Yeah. OK, this is a energy conversion rate by the pressure buoyancy. This is this uh, exercise convection and there are a Lorentz force. It, this means that uh, this is a uh, uh, energy conversion from the internal energy to the kinetic energy. And uh, this is a uh, kinetic energy to the magnetic energy. So I compare the, this uh, energy con uh, conversion. So when I increase uh, resolution, the conversion rate increases. So in the highest resolution case, so 76% of the pressure buoyancy work is transported, uh, is, is uh, uh, transformed to the magnetic energy. So this is a uh, uh, equipartition magnetic field versus uh, RMS magnetic fields. So this shows, uh, this, these three lines show the equipartition magnetic field in hydrodynamic case. These three lines show the equipartition magnetic field in MHD case. So as I said, uh, this is suppressed. So magnetic field suppresses the convection velocity. And uh, this is a uh, uh, RMS magnetic field in MHD case. So yeah, you can see that uh, in the highest resolution case, the, uh, around the base of the convection zone, the equation partial magnetic field and the RMS magnetic field is comparable. So this is a ratio between uh, RMS magnetic field and the equation partial magnetic field. In the highest resolution case, so it reaches a uh, 95% of the equipartial magnetic fields. So, so even around the top boundary, it ex exceeds 60%. So I mean that uh, so in the solar convection zone with the high resolution calculation, it can um, effectively increase the strength of the magnetic field. So this shows the uh, RMS velocity. This is a, a hydrodynamic case for the three component RMS velocity. And uh, this is a, uh, these solid lines are MHD case. So, of course, uh, RMS velocity is suppressed. So, so this is a ratio between uh, hydrodynamic case and the MHD case. So in the highest resolution case, so the R, uh, RMS velocity is suppressed to the 50%. Okay, you see, in, in the, as the base of the convection zone. So, interesting thing here is. Uh, so you can see this is a, a ratio between RMS velocity of the hydrodynamic case and the MHD case in X component. X is a vertical, okay? So the uh, suppression almost converges in the X direction. But uh, in the horizontal direction, it is not uh, converges. And uh, in the higher resolution case, the horizontal, magnet, uh, horizontal RMS velocity is more suppressed like this. This is uh, important for the energy 
the transports. So this is an uh, energy flux. So this red line is a convective flux, enter B flux. So I mean, express like this. So dash, uh, dotted lines are hydro case, and the uh, solid lines are uh, MHD case. So as I said, the RMS velocity is suppressed significantly. So something, 30% reduction in the middle of the convection zone. But the entropy flux is reduced only 12%. This is the opposite sense of the UFONS calculation. So I mean, in the UFONS uh, calculation, the RMS velocity, is, uh, I mean, the entropy flux is more reduced than the RMS velocity when they include the uh, magnetic fields. But uh, in my calculation, the RMS, RMS velocity is reduced, but the, I mean the convection is reduced, but the energy flux is not so reduced. So I mean that this VR is reduced, and the rho zero is the same, and CP is the same, so maybe T1 is increased. So this is a, a convective structure of the uh, entropy, entropy perturbation as a, a 0.8 solar radius. So this is a hydro case and a MHD case. So you can see the difference, the clear difference between hydro and MHD case. In the hydro case, we can see very small scale turbulence and the larger scale structure of the downflow. Okay, but uh, in the MHD case, so we can we have the very small scale structure in downflow. Okay, so this is the opposite sense of the velocity uh, velocity components. So velocity has a very rough, smooth structure in the MHD calculation, but uh, uh, entropy has uh, this type of uh, very compact structure in the MHD <laughs> calculation. So this is a movie. So it is easier to see that the, when we, you see the vertical cut of the entropy, so in the hydrodynamic case, so very uh, efficient mixing between downflow and upflow can be seen. So, so downflow and upflow is mixed with a very small scale uh, convection. Ah, uh, yeah. So this is a vertical and the horizontal plane is something like here, here. Okay. Yeah. They have the same, uh, they have the same color scale. Yeah, same color scale, yeah. So, but the, so in MHD case, the uh, horizontal mixing between upflow and downflow is suppressed by the magnetic field. This is something like magnetosphere. So when we increase the magnetic field, so this is a uh, horizontal, uh, no, 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 vertical distribution of the uh, RMS entropy. So, so solid line shows the MHD case, and the dotted line shows the uh, uh, hydrodynamic case. So black is so total RMS, RMS, RMS entropy, and the upflow is red, and the downflow is blue. So when we increase the uh, magnetic field, the perturbation is increased. So especially in the downflow, this is downflow. So, so yeah, I repeated that. Uh, so when I increase the magnetic field, so this suppresses the horizontal mixing between downflow and the upflow, and uh, this increases the amplitude of the entropy perturbation. I mean, the downflow is more cooler and the upflow is more hotter. And so this uh, improves the efficiency of the energy transport. So hotter upflow can transport the energy more, and the cooler downflow can transport the energy more. So then the, even when the RMS velocity is suppressed, the uh, energy transport is not so suppressed much. Okay, so, so in terms of the mixing length theory, this can be interpreted as like this. So in the mixing length theory, the temperature difference can be estimated with this formula. So temperature, so temperature, so this is almost adiabatic in my calculation, and this is this can be fixed. And uh, in in the previous global calculation, the uh, conductivity for the entropy is very large. So this assumes something turbulent conductivity. So this is modified. So then delta T is uh, reduced, and the energy transport is more reduced. But in my calculation, the uh, conductiv thermal conductivity is very smooth. It is very high resolution. So this is fixed, and this is fixed. So mixing length is increased with the magnetic field. So the mixing between upflow and downflow is suppressed, and the mixing length is uh, increased. This is uh, most of uh, And uh, another interesting topic is uh, effective plantar number. 
as you may know, the frontal number in the uh, solar convection zone is very low, something 10 to the minus 5. But uh, in the high resolution image calculation, the structure of the velocity, so this is a definition of the frontal number. And the very small uh, frontal number means uh, uh, kinetic viscosity is much smaller, as, uh, much smaller than the magnetic diffusivity and the thermal conductivity. <coughs> but uh, in high resolution calculations, the structure of the velocity is smoothed by the magnetic field. It's it uh, acts uh, as uh, something like the viscosity. So this indicates the increase of effective magnetic frontal number. And uh, in addition, the, the small scale uh, mixing is suppressed by the magnetic field. So this means the turbulent mixing is suppressed by the magnetic field, only for the entropy. So this means that the uh, effective uh, plantar number, thermal plantar number is increased. So, so this is a comparison between my calculation and Matthias one. So, so in order to compare the, our calculation, I extend the, my calculation domain to the 0.99, but it is bad for the small scale dynamo. Because, uh, so this is a calculation result with a 0.99, but uh, in, in this region, I cannot resolve the uh, inertia scale of turbulence. But uh, yeah, so, so and, uh, in order to maintain the stability of the calculation, I need to use a, a bit larger diffusivity for that calculation. And, but uh, this is a good comparison. The horizontal axis denotes the uh, radius. Here is the base of the convection zone, and this is the surface. These two lines are result from Matthias 1. So solid line shows the uh, uh, RMS magnetic field. And the uh, uh, dotted line is the uh, uh, equipartial magnetic field. So the so equipartial magnetic field is uh, nicely ag agreed between my 0.99 calculation and the Matthias one. But uh, yeah, so in the uh, RMS, RMS magnetic field is a bit different. So around the base of the Matthias calculation, it is a 0.97 solar radius. The, the RMS magnetic field in Buram calculation is 3,300 Gauss. And in my calculation, so at this depth, uh, the 2,500. So maybe so my calculation is affected by the low resolution or lower top boundary. So I think this, this uh, comparison is, uh, agreement is good. So I mean that we can assume uh, the solar convection zone is filled with it's a uh, small scale dynamo. I mean, I mean that's a, so, so Matthias' argument that the, so, so I mean the mean ma vertical magnetic field in the photosphere, 60 Gauss, can be reproduced by the a small scale dynamo in the upper layer with uh, uh, transport from the base, from the uh, rest of the convection zone is uh, valid, I think. So I also discussed the accelerator pole. So of course I cannot directly address this problem from my calculation, so because uh, I use the Cartesian geometry and the no rotation. But uh, so in upper layer, small scale velocity is selectively uh, suppressed. So when we see the spectra, small scale velocity is suppressed. This is good for, the, for this problem. I mean, the small scale velocity has a larger loss B number. So this is the definition of loss B number. So small, this, when this is small, the loss B number is high. So, but uh, small scale magnetic, uh, small scale velocity is suppressed, so it's uh, it can maintain the banana cell. This is a recent my high resolution calculation of the global sun. So sometimes small scale velocity suppress the formation uh, formation of banana cell. But uh, when so this is a hydro hydro run. But uh, when I increase the magnetic field with high resolution calculation, there is a possibility to uh, maintain the um, maintain the banana cell and the transpose the uh, angular moment and equator world. So, but, uh, so the feasible calculation in the global setting should be uh, discussed. So because uh, in my current calculation, I only use a Cartesian geometry and uh, a very uh, short uh, calculation time. So this is the lowest resolution in my ca Cartesian geometry calculation. So in the global setting, it requires this type of uh, resolution in the Indian grids. This is the same quality as this resolution. This is a very high resolution calculation in global setting. So delta t is something 500 seconds. So <coughs> it means uh, five times 10 to the five steps for the 3,000 day calculation. So it's 
So in my uh, quotes, the, uh, this is uh, accomplished in Yellowstone. So I mean that, uh, so in this resolution, and uh, 3,000 days calculation requires uh, 0.35 million core hours. So this is a four days calculation with uh, 4,000 cores. I mean, so this can be done. So I mean, so we can carry out several challenges for this setting. But uh, so we don't know, so this is enough for the, uh, for solving the accelerated pole problem. So when we double the resolution, so delta x is 750 kilometer, so this is really high resolution. No one can reach that. So, but uh, it costs uh, 5.6 me uh, million core hours. So yeah, it is not impossible, but uh, it is really challenging. But, but uh, yeah, it is uh, something related to the uh, very important problem. So if this is not enough, we should challenge that. And uh, but uh, when we double the resolution for this, it costs uh, 100 million core hours. So this is not possible in current situation. So anyway, so we, so if we cannot solve this, the problem with this resolution, we should wait for 10 years or something. So this is a, a comparison with the heliocytosmology. <coughs> so as I said in the previous slide, the horizontal velocity is more suppressed in the higher resolution calculation. So it mean, it is a good factor. So because the uh, uh, local heliocytosmology uh, essentially estimates the horizontal velocity. So, so, when, so this is not converse yet. So when I increase the resolution and the horizontal velocity is more suppressed, it is good, to, good for the, uh, this one. But anyway, it is really difficult to suppress the large air and on a small air uh, spectra. So this is a two over magnitude. So I mean the small scale dynamo is essentially suppress the small scale, magnet, uh, small scale velocity. So it is really difficult to separate this. Anyway, so this is not problem only for the, our global setting. So this is also for the, some supergranulation scale simulation. This is the calculation of my highest resolution calculation for uh, global setting. This is the grid spacing something one megameter. The spectra of the, so this is the spectra of the, my calculation of this. So no rotation, and this is a supergranulation calculation recently by, done by Jesse Road. And uh, this is a stagger calculation. And uh, <coughs> yeah, and so I, I would say, yeah, supergranulation scales, photospheric radiative image uh, simulation has a consistent spectra to the, our global setting. So I don't want to say, but uh, I need to say, so our, we are, our calculation are consistently inconsistent with uh, observation. Yeah, so anyway, so this is a really difficult problem. So yeah, I would say, so accelerated pole can be, yeah, might be able to uh, be uh, solved with a small scale dynamo, but uh, okay. Ah, so observation is something around here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aspect of the kinetic horizontal kinetic energy. Okay. <coughs> yeah. So. Ah, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know much about the heliocytosmology, but uh, th this is this just from the uh, our obtained data, obtained velocity. So this. Sorry, the top. Yeah, the top. Yeah, top. That's just uh, the velocity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the, the heliocytic kernels are very large, so in radius and horizontally. Uh huh. They will smooth out a lot. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm not sure, maybe, but maybe. Mm. <coughs> but also, if you go to the next one, uh, 
technology was signed. Yeah, yeah. Um, you would be uh, correlation tracking of surface features on the same number. Basically, if you want to get these simulations in Riemann that you see results from correlation tracking of um, of surface features, you have to reduce the convective armor. That's the velocity by a factor of 2.5 and more than 10 megameters. Or say in, in very extreme words, these emissions get as wide as the upper was 10 megameters of the convection point and then all cells have to take Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, so anyway, so this is a really difficult problem. So, so yeah, our missing point should be the role of global dynamo. So, so in my calculation, in my current Cartesian geometry calculation, I don't uh, include the uh, rotation, okay? So it is difficult to suppress a larger scale velocity with magnetic field. Yeah, this is my argument. So, <coughs> so anyway, so maybe we need to do some global dynamo simulation with a uh, uh, setting in, in, in which the uh, small scale dynamism effect. So we don't know the uh, large scale dynamo in the higher resolution case. So, so the other possibility is observation is wrong. So of course, so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, so so this is not possible, uh, uh, not feasible. But uh, resolution not enough is another. So anyway, so I have no idea about this problem. Okay, this is a summary. So the main uh, result of my calculations: RMS magnetic field can be ninety-five percent of the equipartial magnetic field to the kinetic energy at the base of the convection zone in the higher resolution calculation. And the RMS velocity reduced to the 50% compared with the hydrodynamic run. And the horizontal mixing between up and down flow is suppressed by the uh, magnetic field. And the entropy perturbation is enhanced. With enhanced and it improves the efficiency of the uh, energy transport by the entropy flux. Thank you. <laughs> so, first of all, exactly what are these gradients? DTDR is the background, and DTDR prime is within the plume, or is that yeah, adiabatic? Yeah. yeah, so yeah, so this is, should be an adiabatic, but uh, when we have the thermal con conduction, this, this is not uh, adiabatic. But I was going to say, it, it, is it really that this this is uh, a local uh, argument uh, uh, having to do with local temperature gradients? But the way I interpret this is that most of the uh, entropy perturbations are coming from the top, and the magnetic field helps them to um, be transmitted from the upper thermal boundary layer into the mid convection zone. So <laughs> it seems like more of a non-local. Uh, yeah. Uh, argument than, than this. It, it, it's not, it, 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 it's coming from the thermal boundary layer and, and making it deeper down, and the magnetic field promotes that. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. So, machine links, so for this argument, can is uh, something local argument, but uh, so I mean, so even in your idea, I think this can be used because, yeah. So, in the, so downflow prune is, has a, so yeah, this, this expresses some missing uh, parameter. So missing is suppressed is can be expressed with this. Yeah, so that that would I guess would almost be like half the depth of the convection zone because you're you're getting from the from the upper boundary layer into the into the deep convection zone. So. Mm. Yeah. 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 Yeah
well, the mixing length is just uh, the the overturning, the scale height well, of the overturning. Well, not, not, not the so words what, defined here, really. Yeah. I mean, this okay. is a slightly different yeah. idea. <clears throat> True, but I think what you see in this in your simulations with uh, when you add magnetic fields is that you don't have the the turbulent uh, communication between upflows and downflows, and you only mainly have the uh, the simple overturning from upflows into the downflows. So you don't have communication the other way, yeah, which yeah. makes connection very efficient. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so in my magnetic field, so, so yeah. overturning mass is also okay. suppressed. Yeah. Sorry, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, did you say? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so I also estimate the overturning mass. So in the so uh, net net mass flux, mass flux. So this is also reduced in my MAG run. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can you find the, the view graph which shows the suppression of velocity by magnetic field uh, for the vertical and horizontal? Mm -hmm. Can you go to that view graph? So, so okay. It's good that the velocity is suppressed so that corridors, you know, the velocity number is lower, so that you get, you know, in terms of solving the problems of solving the trilogy. But, but this is not good. This yeah, if you yeah. suppress horizontal velocity more than the vertical. That actually is the opposite. From yeah, the yeah, velocity. yeah. I agree. Yeah. So anyway, so we need to carry out the global setting. So global setting. Yeah. Maybe first it is. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. I mean, so, so the criteria for the so equator watt acceleration should be determined with the so loss mean number including the scale. So just one number cannot express the criteria. I think. So. Yeah, but should be bigger than VR in order for you to get the right transfer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so in in the global setting with rotation, it, it can be achieved. So rotation can generate the uh, banana cell, and then generate the uh, V five faster than the uh, V R. So in this calculation, I don't include the rotation. So I need to confirm so which is faster in the uh, global setting. Yeah, it is difficult to yeah discuss from this only this with this calculation. Yeah. Mm, other than the computation domain, uh, what is exactly the difference um, uh, in your calculation, in Matthias's calculation, and in Hesselor's? Is it that uh, reduced sounds between? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that is that is what you used, but they did not use. Not use. <coughs> and uh, yeah, of course. So I also mentioned the uh, the luminosity is uh, luminosity is the same, but uh, uh, flux is different. So I adapt the uh, solar flux as the base of the convection zone, and uh, Matthias adapts the uh, flux as a photosphere. So this is uh, uh, two times smaller than the uh, flux as the base of the convection zone. Yeah. Um, just a dumb question. These. What, what's the real effect of reducing the sound speed? I mean, is, is that, as, as time evolves here, I imagine that fresher differences can accumulate if the, I mean, if you suppress the sound speed, <coughs> you're basically stopping the communication of pressure perturbations from one place to another one. Yeah. And then th does that show up? I mean, is that something to do with the scale sizes that you're getting? Yeah. So yeah. Too much power on large scales, or anything to do with this, or is it just totally irrelevant? Can you find yeah, an yeah. argument? So the sound wave is some, mm, some, some. Mm, a mechanism to release the uh, pressure perturbation from the uh, downflow. So, so our our finding criteria for the reduced speed of sound technique is uh, the so I even when reduce the uh, speed of sound, this should be fa faster than the speed of convection velocity. So, when this is satisfied, the uh, pressure release can be satisfied. So, so I mean, so so there's some downflow and the pressure is released. So, so when we have the very high speed of sound release some this extent, but uh, when we have the reduced sound speed, so the release is only around here. So just the difference is right, something like this. Yeah. But, but can I generate large scale structures artificially? 
differences in thermodynamics that would account for some of the differences with observations that you find, or is that different time scale altogether? Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, so I compare the, my result with ASH calculation, and the velocity spect spectra is almost the same. So, yeah, I, I don't think there are any, any effect on the larger scale. Sound waves don't do anything in the solar interior as far as convection is concerned. Then. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Okay. And then have you thought about, uh, you know, the numerical experiments being applied to, say, real laboratory dynamo experiments? Yeah. I mean, can, can, I mean, would you learn anything by trying to model a liquid sodium dynamo machine or something? I mean. Mm. <laughs> Because there you, you know, we have a proposal to do that. So call up NASA and <laughs> <laughs> support it. Tell, tell them to accept the proposal. Okay. No, but I mean that that would obviously help you understand some of this missing <coughs> physics or whatever that yeah, is yeah. going on. But yeah. maybe more accurate. I mean, you would expect, I think, isn't it true that you would expect a model to so, but the one to glow so very well in the laboratory. The one missing point we cannot uh, reproduce. Currently, is uh, a higher resolution within the global setting. So it is. It requires a high noise number and a high magnetic resonance number. So it is. Yeah, this should be so require some very large system and a very less diffusive system. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. Related to the earlier question regarding sound wave, uh, what, what, what you're, uh, you know, artificially reducing the sound wave to make it more likely to encounter shocks or, or a shock is yeah. small from that regime? Yeah, so, yeah, so in my previous calculation, it's um, in this case the validity of the reduced of sound technique, and uh, I reduce the uh, speed of sound very much, it shows the sound the shock wave. Yeah, yeah, but uh, in my case, so the Maha number is something 0.1, so the no shock wave in my calculation. Yeah. Uh, what is the efficiency of your two codes, the elastic approach and the reduced uh, sound wave <coughs> approach? How do they compare? Yeah, I, I don't know the much about the, uh, but uh, <coughs> so. Yeah, I would say only say this, not the, uh, this. Yeah, this. So I can update the three times ten to the five uh, cell, so grid points per second per core. I think this is comparable to the rule of goals. Yeah, this should scale better. The Ash can now scale out to about thirty thousand cores, but but you can probably do better with with, with this because you don't have the global communication. It's not something but, uh, but smaller time there, steps. Since we have a time stepping scheme which you can run with the CFL number of up yeah, to yeah. two actually, so it gives you another factor yeah. of two or some other codes. <coughs> yeah. So CFL number in my global setting is something point one point eight. Yeah. This is an advantage. <laughs> That was yeah, found interesting. That at the beginning, you mentioned the uh, simulation. I think it's a simulation uh, showing the dependence of the differential rotation on uh, Rossby number. And uh, is there there's a jump from uh, 0.4 to 1. So I was wondering if there's a critical point that this changes, or is a slow transition? Ah, so this is a very sharp transition. Mm -hmm. It's a sharp transition. Yeah. Okay. So that. Paper, I should check. Yeah, yeah. Because very sharp But it's not narrowed down to something, to, to a specific number between those two. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. 0 0.4 and 1. Yeah, exactly. So it hasn't been narrowed down to, to yeah, a closer a number. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, it depends how exactly you define the Rossi. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. But it's of order 1, slightly less. And there's by stability. Problem too. Sometimes mm -hmm. the problems get close. History. Mm -hmm. Questions? Thank uh, you. Thank you again.